Welcome, welcome. We are officially in October, the only month where I can go out in public dress like this. And for today's video, I'm going to review a horror movie, but not just any horror movie, but one that has a huge impact on cinema as a whole. So we're going to check out Nosferatu. Nosferatu, a symphony of horror, is a 1922 silent German expressionist horror film directed by F.W. Murnau. Nosferatu was produced by Prana Film and is an unauthorized and unofficial adaptation of Bram Stoker's novel Dracula. But in this version, various names and other details are changed from the novel as a way to avoid copyright infringement. But despite this, Stoker's heirs, more specifically, his widow sued with the court ordering all copies of the film to be destroyed. But luckily, several prints of Nosferatu survive. So as a giant fuck you to Stoker's widow, we're gonna check out Nosferatu. The film begins as an account that took place in 1938 in a fictional German town of Weisburg. And here we meet Thomas Hutter, played by Gustav V. Wangenheim. And he is the John Harker of this story. And we meet his wife, Ellen, played by Greta Strader. And she is hating on his flowers. Excuse me, princess. Anyways, Hutter is sent to Transylvania by his employer, real estate agent Her Nacht, played by Alexander Branach, to visit a new client named Count Orlock, who plans to buy a house, and Nacht suggests a house across Hutter's own home. So Hutter is on his way to Transylvania, and while embarking on his journey, he stops at an end where the locals become frightened by the mere mention of Orlok's name. In addition, they also warn him not to go any further as there is a werewolf in the forest. But don't get too excited here, as it is not a werewolf, but a striped hyena. And back at the inn, Hutter finds a book about vampires and just scoffs it off. Next day, Hutter rides on a coach, but they stop as it's getting dark. So Hutter walks his way there until he gets an Uber to the castle. And by the way, I didn't edit this. This is how it was made. So Hutter finally arrives, and he is welcomed by Count Orlock himself, played by the late great Max Shrek. And during dinner, Hutter accidentally cuts his thumb, and Orlok tries to suck the blood out of it, but Hutter pulls his hand away. Then Orlok just corners Hutter, and that's literally it. Hutter then wakes up the next morning to find fresh punctures on his neck, which he assumes are just mosquito bites. That's what they all say. Later that night, Orlok signs the documents to purchase the house, and he notices a photo of Hutter's wife. Ellen remarking that she has a lovely neck. And as you can tell, he's got those hungry eyes already. After that, Hutter reads the book about vampires he took from the inn, and he starts to suspect that Orlok is a vampire. No shit, Sherlock. And seriously, did he just realize this now? Hutter then cowers in his room as midnight approaches, and the door opens by itself, and we get this iconic moment. So Hutter hides under the bed covers and falls unconscious while his wife Ellen awakes from her sleep and in a trance walks onto her balcony's railing, which gets Hutter's friend Harding's attention. When the doctor arrives, she shouts Hutter's name and apparently she can see Orlock in his castle and vice versa. Now it looks like you survived another day, Hutter. He then goes exploring the castle and finds a coffin in the basement only to see Orlock sleeping. And Hutter gets the bright idea to open it. Seriously, man, are you trying to get killed? So he goes back to his room and hours later, Orlok piles up his coffins on a coach and climbs into the last one before the coach leaves. And Hutter escapes and falls unconscious. 
Luckily, he is taken to a hospital and he rushes back home. Meanwhile, the coffins are taken aboard a boat where all the ship's sailors and captain die and Orlok takes control. Back at Westborg, Nock is sent to an insane asylum and starts eating flies. So yeah, if you couldn't tell, he is the Renfield of this story. When the ship arrives in Weisborg, Orlok leaves carrying one of his coffins and moves into the house he just purchased. But on brighter news, Hutter arrives home where he and his wife greet each other enthusiastically. Back at the docks, Hutter's boy Harding is investigating the ship, finding the dead captain and a log of the journey. He reads about how an illness gradually killed all eight crewmen, and the captain wrote that a rat infestation and the possibility of a plague threat. Upon reading this, the doctor tells everyone to return to their homes and keep their windows and doors locked. Later, the town crier announced that plague victims must have stayed within their homes, and white crosses mark the doors of plague victims as coffins are being carried out of several houses. I'm not gonna lie, this part is very relevant today. It's kinda scary. Anyways, Hutter tells his wife not to read the horrible book he has brought back with him, but some force compels her to read it. Apparently, she never heard of the old saying, Didn't you know that curiosity killed the cat? <laughs> then Hutter tries to comfort her, but they sense the presence of Count Orlock as he watches them from his new home. So he's like the NSA of his time. Then Harding's sister falls ill, and Ellen watches as a funeral procession is led by her home. This leads her to read the book, where she reads that the only way Nosferatu can be defeated is if a pure-hearted woman distracts the vampire with her beauty and gives it her blood willingly, making it forget about the coming dawn. Meanwhile, the fear-stricken town is searching for a scapegoat to blame for the plague, and they blame the recently escaped Noct. They chase him throughout the city, but he swaffer donks him and mocks the townspeople from the roofs before running into the woods. Meanwhile, Ellen is working on a needlepoint writing a German phrase, meaning, I love you. Later that night, she consents Orlock watching her from his building. She opens the window in a sense inviting him to her. She pretends to fall ill, telling Hutter to go fetch Professor Bulwer, leaving her alone to face Count Orlock and she cowers in bed as the shadow of Orlock creeps closer and closer. Orlock enters and drinks her blood, and starts as the sun rises, causing Orlock to vanish in a puff of smoke. Nock, who has finally been captured and returned to the asylum, senses that his master is dead. Ellen is then found by Hutter and the two remnants embrace each other as the horror is finally over. And the last scene shows Count Orlock's castle destroyed in the Carpathian Mountains, symbolizing the end of his bloody reign of terror. And that was Nosferatu. The film has received overwhelmingly positive reviews, it has a 97% on Rotten Tomatoes, and in March 17th, 1995, the Vatican added it as one of the 45 films that are important for people to watch. It is also ranked as 21st in Empire Magazine's 100 Best Films of World Cinema in 2010. In addition, the film is included on Roger Ebert's Great Movies list. The film is also included in the 1001 movies you should see before you die by Steven Schneider. And filmmaker Werner Herzog called it the greatest German film ever made. And he also directed its remake, Nosferatu the Vampire, in 1979. This is also Mexican director Guillermo del Toro's favorite film. And in 2000, there was a movie called Shadow of the Vampire, which is a fictionalized take of the making of Nosferatu. Supposedly, there's an urban legend saying that Max Schreck was an actual vampire. Moreover, the film also has a huge impact in pop culture, as musicians like Blue Oyster Cult, Queen, and Saxon have either made a song about the film or used footage of it in their music videos. The film was also the inspiration for Stephen King's Salem's Law and for Robert England's performance as Freddy Krueger. 
Younger audiences may know Nosferatu from an episode of Spongebob called Graveyard Shift. Nosferatu! Or in James Rolfe's First Monster Madness. That's literally how I first knew about it. And just recently, Robert Eggers was announced to direct a remake of Nosferatu with Bill Skarsgård and Lily Rose Depp cast in the roles. With all that out of the way, now it's time for my opinion, and I enjoyed it very much. I like its creepy and haunting feel with its use of lighting, shadows, gothic imagery, and cinematography. It may not be scary for some people, but it does give you chills just by watching it. Max Schreck's performance as Count Orlock is incredible, as he brings an atmospheric experience to the film whenever he's on screen. And his image of the vampire lingers in your mind even after you watch it. In addition, the makeup is great as it gives Warlock his distinctive and eerie appearance that has become iconic over the years, and it helped enhance Shrek's performance. Overall, I highly recommend this film, especially during this month of October. So I give it 5 Warlocks out of 5. And that was the video. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more videos just like this. Stay safe out there. Goodbye.